Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello, my name is Parker Widenote, and I'm the guest host of Community Matters. For this episode, we're going to be talking about the benefits of being an athletic coach. So my guest here today is Coach um, Rick Hendricks of Mid-Pacific Institute Track and Field and Cross Country. Thanks for being here. Good afternoon. Glad to be here. Thanks. So you've done like a lot of running in your time. So what is the best parts of being a coach at Mid-Pacific? Oh, I, I believe it's just being with the kids and making them, uh, watching them progress from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. It doesn't matter the the uh, ability of the the athlete. It's just seeing the, the progression of making sure they um, do do better from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. There's always going to good, be good athletes, but the majority of the, the athletes are average, so it's just good to see the progression and see them improve throughout the season. What um, qualities, so you mentioned like seeing everybody progress. Mm -hmm. um, what qualities do um, Mid-Pacific and other coaches look for in an upcoming coach? Like, Basically, it's just the, the attitude and the dedication that the athlete puts into it. Um, as a coach, we can only tell, this, tell the athlete what type of workout to do, but it's up to the athlete themselves to do the, the workout and put in the effort of it. So it's uh, basically just showing them the way and then having the athlete do it. Yeah. So. Back when you were running mm -hmm. um, cross country and track, I believe, I was just interested. Did you draw any inspiration from um, your coach? And um, basically, it was a lot of. I grew up in a real small town, so um, a town of ten thousand. So it was basically, I played all sports, and uh, in high school. Actually, I started running when I was in uh, intermediate school in, in seventh grade. And it was just more of a social aspect back then. And then as I progressed older, um, I got more interested in, in uh, the competitive part of it. But actually in high school, I didn't really run cross country. Um, I played football and then in the fall and then basketball in the, in the winter. And then I ran track and field in the, the spring. And throughout the summer, being a small town, I would played I'd golf and I'd play tennis and I'd, I'd play baseball. But um, it was just the, the little things that my coaches told me to do um, and to strive to be better. So uh, I, I couldn't help but notice that you uh, played, I heard um, that you played basketball and um, tennis. Right. So how did, how did that uh, running become your main sport? And um, it, It's just something that when I was in high school, I, I was good at, so I stuck with it. But um, when I was a, a freshman, no, actually when I was a sophomore, I played all three sports. I played football, basketball, and track. And then when I became a junior, I felt like I, I wasn't the athlete I should have been for running track, so I kind of dropped basketball in the winter. I played football, and then I started competing for track in the, in the winter. So there were some races that I'd go to indoors and I'd run indoor track in the winter to get ready for the, the spring sports. And that was track, so. So just out of curiosity, when you were, you were running track, what events did you do? Um, I, I ran in uh, intermediate school. It, it was, back then it was yards. It wasn't meters back when I was running, oh. so it was yards. <laughs> So when I was in intermediate school, it was a 600. That's the most, the furthest we could run when we were in intermediate school. They didn't have longer races. And then when I got into high school, I ran the 880, which is equivalent to an 800 meter run now. And then I ran uh, the 400. I ran the four by 440 yard relay in high school. Oh, that's neat. So yeah. we actually have some pictures of that and Maybe uh, you could elaborate on it. So um, yeah, this, what race is this? This is one of the races um, we hosted uh, Invitational. And this is, I believe, when I was a junior. And I, this was one of my better races. Um, and if you notice, it's a cinder track. We barely, oh. <laughs> barely ran any, any type of uh, 
uh, hard surfaces, and I, we, we had to wear really long cleats back then. And running shoes back then were really crude <laughs> compared to what they are now. Yeah. But um, this was one of my better races. I, I believe I ran around two minutes in this race for the 880. And oh, wow. uh, it's pretty, I like this picture because it's all, like all the, the timers are really concentrating on getting my time and the, the, the boy holding the tape is really concentrating on holding it to watch me finish. But I, that's a picture that I really like. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, so it's crazy because how you've came from like going from there and now seeing how track has evolved and like how like the shoes. So like, what are your thoughts on that? Well, the, the technology is so much different now. But back then, it was basically um, just go out and run. I mean, the coach would give me a workout and I'd do it. But now it, there's so much more technology involved in. In doing the individual sports, and it's uh, it's a lot more technical this, now than it was back in when I was running in high school. Do you think that um, the technology um, helped or hurt, hurt the sport of running? Oh, it, it definitely helped it. But I mean, there were back then. Um, I was running two minute half miles and under two minutes and. Right now, there's athletes in in Hawaii that are running basically that amount. So it really hasn't changed that much as far as times. Um, but the athletes are so much more in tune to lifting weights to get stronger in their upper body. It, back then, it was mainly just working on running. But now, technology is building up your, your whole body to make you be stronger. Yeah. So for if there's any athletes like watching over here and they're wondering like, oh, like how do you come up with like the workouts? How do you like um, make them? Well, you got to, you got to, uh, it's usually a, a hard, easy, hard, easy type um, workout. Mondays could be really hard and then you want to rest the body the next day. So you might do a real easy workout or even like a cross training and then hit a Wednesday, and do a harder workout, and then just tax the body. And then Thursday, easy workout, maybe cross-train, maybe have the athlete do a, a bicycle workout or even do weights on Thursday, and then back to Friday, do a hard workout, and then easy on Saturday, and then do a, a really long, easy run on Sunday. Is but that? It, oh, sorry. It's just, it's just a matter of you've got to rest your body. You've got to... You've got to do a hard workout, but you have to rest your body. Yeah, is that um, some of the mistakes that sometimes you find in, even in pro coaching? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, there's, there's athletes that try and push themselves too hard, and it's just a matter of getting injured, just pushing too hard. It's, you just got to listen to your body, and if it's saying, you know, I'm just tired today, there's no reason just to, to back off and take it easy that day. Yeah, and many many people kind of get confused of that being like according to like laziness and all that. But sometimes like, and I found this out kind of the hard way because I now like Coach John and you are trying to like have make me have less miles right. that I'm putting in a week. Yeah. So I've been trying my best to do that. Like I didn't run yesterday. But yeah, I, I notice a major like, like I noticed like performance-wise that I was getting better in like time trials and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that I really benefit from like resting and stuff. Especially just before races, if you take like a, do an easy run two days before the race, and then just maybe take the day off the ba the day before the race, your body just replenishes, and if you eat well. And you go into the race, your body's all refreshed, and, and you run your better times when your body's refreshed. So, yeah, so about um, also eating well, mm -hmm. like for people my age that don't, because we have pretty high metabolism, and I still try to eat pretty well, because I don't restrict calories or anything, how do you think nutrition-wise, like how, how we should watch our nutrition? Well, basically, it's... it's uh, you just got to watch what you eat as far as, I mean, vegetables is good. Um, fruits are really good. Uh, to stay away from sodas and bread and rice. 
and just uh, eat a lot of carbs. Um, Italian food is good. I mean, spaghetti, um, car carbohydrates is really good to hydrate. But the main thing is is hydrating your body. Make sure that you drink a lot of water, especially in Hawaii where it's really hot and you're out in the sun uh, running at 3, 4 in the afternoon. You just need to replenish your body with, uh, you know, hydrate. We, I just constantly tell, tell my athletes, you got to hydrate. you got to drink water because I've seen too many cases where Kids, uh, athletes have run and they, they get dehydrated. And no matter how much you tell them to drink, they just, for some reason, skip it. And it, it shows sometimes they just, you know, get dehydrated. Yeah, and I, I think it really, you can, like, I don't know about you, but like, it really benefited me when I actually started writing down, like, workouts and nutrition-wise. So that way I could say, oh, like, what am I eating and like, Having, like, for me, personally, like, having a little bit is not that bad because if you write it down, you should say, okay, maybe I need a little bit grams of, like, saturated fats right. and all that. Yeah. And I think keeping a notebook is good. So do you, like, encourage that? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, writing down what you eat, the mileage that you run every day, keeping a record of, of, uh, of that really helps. You can just you can just see, and then you can look back and see how your performances are after you you know maybe there's something you can tweak and and improve on or some, or you can eat something different and maybe that'll look, that'll change your, your change your performance. But keeping a record of it is definitely a, a big plus. Yeah. What well, okay? So this is um I'm like back also when you were in like in collegiate mm -hmm. running. Because I know that you ran for a college. Right. What were like the big moments in your career? Well, right out of high school, um, it was it was fun because I was being recruited by University of New Mexico and Texas El Paso and the local school in my town, Western New Mexico. And then I also was recruited by um, a junior college in Arizona, Central Arizona. And I ended up going to Central Arizona my first year. Um, and the coach was um, George Young, who was an Olympian. He ran the steeplechase in the late 60s, and then he ran the marathon in the late se or the early 70s. So he was a big influence in my life uh, in my early collegiate career. And then I transferred to Western New Mexico, which is in Silver City, New Mexico. So I finished my collegiate career there. And uh, it was just uh, really, really neat to do a lot of traveling to go to different places, different colleges, um, and meeting different athletes on all types of levels. But I think just the travel was a lot of fun in college. I, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're going to take a short break, and then we'll dive more into um, coaching itself. Okay. Aloha, I'm Richard Concepcion, the host of Hispanic Hawaii. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. We will bring you entertainment, educational, and also we tell you what is happening right here within our community. Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host on Think Tech Hawaii of Pacific Partnerships in Education. Every other Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m., I hope you'll join us as we explore the value, the accomplishments, and the challenges of education here in the Pacific Islands. Hey, aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. <music> And we are back with um, Community Matters. I'm here with uh, my coach, Coach Rick Hendricks. And now we're going to be talking more about coaching itself. So the first one I want to really like 
ask you is what are the difference between coaching cross country and coaching track? Uh, cross country is more um, just running. I mean, cross country, you just have to go out and get the mileage in. Um, there will be days that where we do some uh, um, track work, like 800s to, to work on more speed work, but most of the workouts are basically um, running mileage, um, anywhere from two miles up to six or eight miles, uh, once the athlete can do that. Whereas in track, it's more um, refined. Um, uh, so track, you have shorter distances, whereas cross country is a, a two to three mile race. Track is more uh, specified anywhere from, uh, well, you've got your sprinters and then your distance, middle distance, which is uh, 800, and then your, your more distance uh, being 15 and 3,000. So those are a lot uh, shorter distances in cross country, so you do a lot more speed work for, uh, for track. So that involves more of a, a track workout, whereas cross country doesn't. So cross country can like just go out and run on the road and just run, run, run. But track is more specific, just uh, more speed work on the track. Okay. Uh, so why why do you think that there isn't a 5,000 meter and 10,000 meter on the track? Um, well, college has it, but not in high school. And I think it it's more of a development issue for uh, high school uh, athletes. Um, I believe they just, and time too, it's a lot of time consuming, yeah. you know. People complain about running a 3,000. A lot of coaches complain or the, the parents complain about 3,000 because it just takes so long. And they can't imagine having a five or a 10,000, which would just, you know, really take a long time in a, a track meet. But it, a lot of it is, is time also. You only have a specific amount of time that you can hold the meet. Yeah. What are your um, biggest goals for this year uh, in terms of um, coaching-wise? Um, again, I go back to just making sure that the uh, the athletes uh, progress throughout the year um, and do better. Um, a lot of times, a lot of the, the athletes are in it for social aspects of it. And then there's athletes like you who want to compete and really do good um, in competition. So it's, it's a matter of just, you have to kind of just uh, look at the athlete and see what their needs are and you know which ones to push harder and which ones to kind of back off on and uh, you know if they're more social aspects of it you don't push them as hard but you want to the athletes that you know are going to compete really well you just you you just push them harder to to improve and do really well in the in their competition especially towards the end towards uh, the the uh, conference and the, the states. Well, I I really like also the um, <clears throat> the social aspect too because I got to meet a lot of um, people that actually actually inspired me to like do the sport more like Charlie and like Dane and Matt right. guys. And I think that's like <clears throat> really cool that if it weren't for the sport, I wouldn't have known them. So. That's that's a pretty um, big thing, and I'm so happy that I got the opportunity. To. Plus, you meet plus you meet a lot of uh, athletes from other schools, and you kind of become bonding with them too. Because especially when you run a three thousand, it's it or or cross country, all of you are just putting so much effort into it, and you know how much effort you put into it, and they're putting as much effort into it as as you are. So it's kind of like a special bond that you all have together, that you're running together and putting in that time together and, and working it. So you know how hard they're working and they know how you, hard you're working. So it's kind of a bond bond for all of you yeah. pushing each other. Yeah, What? Well, and I don't really notice like you getting frustrated, but I'm just curious because you're really good. What is like the most frustrating part as a coach in terms um, just seeing if an athlete um, can do better and they, they don't, um, just kind of cruising along, um, that, that's kind of just disappointing because you want them to, to put in the effort. And we as coaches, um, you know, it's, it's more a love of the sport. We're not in, in it for the money. We, we're in for the, basically the athletes. 
and so we we just want to we don't want our our efforts to go waste to go to waste we want to see the kids improve so we just it, it's just kind of frustrating to see sometimes somebody that's just kind of dogging it yeah. that's that's the most frustrating part about it so what what are your thoughts like about like new athletes coming in and how do you think that will affect the team when i'm like in varsity and stuff or even graduated like how do you feel about like new people from other schools like coming to mid pat well i think it be when i first started at mid pacific the the program was just starting to to gel i mean we didn't have that many athletes that came out and it's it's good now that to see the numbers that we get out for cross country i believe last year we had 80 athletes uh, we we go from we coach from seventh grade up to to twelfth grade, so it's fun to see that the the intermediate athletes get to run with the the, the junior and the the varsity athletes because they can kind of kind of can look up to them and, and see how hard they work. But um, it it's always good to have numbers because um, you you never know there there there'll be somebody that comes in that. You weren't expecting to do really well. You know, you might project the year before. Oh yeah, this athlete's going to do really good, and this athlete's going to do really good. But that one special person that comes in and just really shines—that's a big bonus. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, it's pretty like cool that like some other people that like like you think that they're not going to be good just because they even height-wise mm -hmm. end up being being like really good because. One thing that I learned is that it doesn't matter about the height. It just matters, like, the time and effort you put into it. Oh, definitely. Oh, so, yeah. It doesn't matter what size you are when you're running. You know, you can be 4'10 and, and run as good as somebody. Actually, it might be a big benefit to be a smaller, smaller person than a large one. But I, I know larger runners have a better stride, but yet a smaller person can have the turnover with their legs and, and be really good at it. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of people going to be like watching this on YouTube. And I know that like most, some people, and I mentioned this also on my Instagram, mm -hmm. which has all kinds of runners. And some don't even come out for track because they're like, I'm not interested. But then, but then they do like small road races, and they end up getting like phenomenal times. Mm -hmm. So, what would you say to them uh, to encourage them to come out? Well, it's basically um, it's not only an individual sport, but it's a it's a team sport. So it's good for uh, the athletes to come out and and be involved in a team sport and be around your other fellow athletes. Um, and you, you can learn from them, and then it's it's like I said, it's a good social sport too. Um, not only, especially like before practice, you can you can have a, a, a all get together and, and talk around, and then once you're into the workout, kind of push each other, and then afterwards you do your cool down, and you kind of kind of that's another social aspect about it, just being around the, uh, your other athletes and having fun with that. Yeah. Okay, so I, I have a quick question, if we can pull the um, picture up. Okay. Um, so, I, so there you are, um, what was, it's the Maui Marathon? Yeah, this was 1986, so um, when I got out of college, I, I kind of quit running for a while. Um, I was in my early 20s, and I kind of concentrated on just working, and then uh, in my late 20s, I got back into running, um, and... I had to kind of adjust to more longer distances. Um, of course, they didn't have really competition for the shorter distance, like the, the 800s. So I got into running road races, and then I got interested in running marathons. So um, I ran, living in Maui, I lived there for 20 years, so I basically ran Maui quite a bit. Um, and then I do Honolulu also marathon but um, it was a good way to just uh, I, I just liked competing I mean that's why I ran um, I didn't do it for social I was more <laughs> competitive that yeah. I, I'd like to win and I like to be in the, the top three. Oh, nice. Yeah. But, what yeah. was your um, marathon PR? Uh, my best one was I never broke three hours I was right 
at three hours, like three hours and 16 seconds. Oh, wow. Yeah, but that's... I never broke that three hour barrier. Oh, that's crazy. And that was in, in uh, Honolulu. Honolulu. Well, it's gonna. It's kind of hard. All the hills in the Honolulu Marathon. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I did, so what are your thoughts on me doing the marathon uh, in between cross country and track season? Is that something? There is no problem with it all. Um, it's good to keep up the running. Um, now, there would be a problem if you ran a marathon during the season because it's different. Training is different for a marathon as it is uh, for cross country. You have to put a lot more mileage in for, for a marathon, and your body breaks down a lot more if you're training for a marathon, whereas cross country, you're more specific. It's a shorter distance. But running a marathon between seasons, there's no problem with it at all. Just keep up the, keep up the running. And, and actually, that you keep in shape for, for track. Yeah. And you start kind of, after you run the marathon, you kind of start uh, declining on your, your mileage for, for track. All right, so I have my uh, final question. Mm -hmm. So we already asked, like, what are some of the um, difficulties of being, like, like what are the, some of the things you don't really like to see? But, like, what are some of the things that, like, some of the joys that come from being a coach? Um, going to the meets and watching, watching all the athletes compete and doing their best. That you know, that's the biggest joy, and just watching them Im improve and um, seeing that big smile on the on on the athlete's face when they finish. You know, uh, that you know, that's one of the best things that a coach can see is just seeing the athlete do well. Yeah. Well, thank you. So we're going to end it here. Thank you so much for um, coming and doing the interview with me. And if you want to um, watch the episode, it will be up at ThinkTech's YouTube channel. And yeah, thank you for watching.